Hey, Lord of the Rings fans, it's your boy, Do Better, Do Better. We are back on the scene. We are back with another episode of Voices of Art, the revered podcast, worldwide known. We, You know the vibes. You already know what we're getting into. Absolutely excited for today's guest. And as always, I'm always excited to be around my wonderful, fabulous co-host, Callie Cosplay. What's up? What's going on, girl? How you doing? But Yay, today, I'm excited. Um, I get to stand out. Uh, one of the guests that we got today... Uh, Makes awesome content, makes uh wonderful, wonderful, hilarious, serious, intriguing content. Like it's it's weird how it is all encompassing in those things. Uh, but I found it really interesting and fascinating. So Kelly, do me the honor and introduce our guests. Well, introducing the guest, I, I would like to preface it by saying that I personally don't believe that invisible airplanes will ever be a thing because I cannot <laughs> see them taking off. And that, with that <laughs> with that joke, you so, might have guessed that our guest today is Airplane Facts with Max. Uh, <laughs> hello. Thank you she, for having she me. She slipped that one in there. Usually she, yeah. you know, she gets to it a little later. I have but... to start getting more creative with it. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Wonder Woman Max, is going to be doing? disappointed. Hi. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks again for having What's me. What's going on? Airplane facts with Max. Uh, if you can, if you can guess what he does, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory in the title of his name. Um, but Max, where can we find you online? How can they find your content? Uh, yeah, on Instagram and TikTok, I'm Airplane Facts with Max. I do have a Twitch channel that I stream sometimes on, which is the same Airplane Facts with Max, and that's that's it really on uh, Twitch, Instagram, and TikTok. Yo, so he's got he's got to reel you in, guys. This is what I was talking about when I said the 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 content he creates is alluring because like I watched the video of his and I was dead serious. I was like, yo, I'm about to learn about airplanes, and I was I was like, I was into it. I didn't even somebody sent it to me, for, but for some reason I didn't think about Lord of the Rings. I was I was just watching to learn about airplanes because he was like about to go in and he told me about an airplane and then he just dropped the Lord of the Rings fact. And I was like so confused, but I was so happy. And I was, I was just, it made me glow and warm inside. And I was like, what is happening right now? First of all, this dude is mass smart. Second of all, he's like, yo, he keeps a serious face the whole time. So it's, it's, it's the stick that you have. It's ill. Like it's well, dope. The sense of like humor the, is immaculate. The persona, it's the amazing. sense of humor yeah. that is there, but like you might miss it if you like, yo, it's the whole thing is encompassing just greatness. Well, it's, it's very serious stuff, you know? <laughs> I like the way you present uh, it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One day, uh, I like I said, well, I told you once before when we were doing that last call, but um, I I never thought about comparing Lord of the Rings and airplanes. And um, and then one day I was like, I wonder if I could just, what, how could I fit Lord of the Rings into something about an airplane? And, you know, then I was able to figure out a way to combine my two favorite things, airplanes and Lord of the Rings. So that is there's what no we're air, about. We're about making no, Lord of the Rings uh, relevant to absolutely anything. Yeah. There's no airplanes I, I, I in Lord of the Rings, which that. is unfortunate because you know <laughs> I did it with the Wu Tang clan because uh Wu Tang is my yeah. favorite rap group and I love hip hop. And I was like, one day I was like, yo, how can I combine these two things that I love? So I compared them uh to each other. I, you know, I did the nine members of the Wu-Tang clan with the nine members of the fellowship of the ring, and it worked out and it blew up and it was awesome. So That's I awesome. applaud your effort for doing that with the thing that you love, airplanes. Now, can I ask a question? Like yeah. you actually work on airplanes. I see you in the hangars working on airplanes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm uh I'm an aircraft mechanic. That's what I do for work. Yeah. So he's um, he's the real deal. He's not just, you know, this isn't yeah. just a hobby. No, yeah, they're. Uh, they're <laughs> He's not probably, just an influencer might... in the hangar. Not actually. Yeah, yeah they they pay me to fix the airplanes. Uh, <laughs> not some strange guy. Hey, Max, yeah. get out of here! We told you to <laughs> stop. The guy's back here yeah. again filming. He's back again. <laughs> I'm hopping the fence every day. I'm like, <laughs> just, just gotta get this there. footage. <laughs> that's why my videos are only 40, 50 seconds long because that's how long I got before they kick me out. You know. <laughs> <Here it is. laughs> You're you're great at what you do, man. You're great at what you do. I, I I enjoy it. I really enjoy your content. So, guys, if you are listening or you are viewing, make sure you go follow Max. They're playing facts with Max. Ill, ill, dope, funny, dope content. Love it. You become knowledgeable in both uh, areas. You'll become an area uh, 
uh, yeah. a person of expertise. Some, sometimes uh, I've had some I've had some people follow me that, that just like Lord of the Rings. And then over the months, you know, they'll start commenting and they're like, I'm actually starting to learn a little bit about airplanes. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's insidious. I'll get you like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you're like, I know what a thrust reverser does. You know? I see what you're doing. I see what yeah. you're doing there. And then people that are in it for the airplanes are like, now I'm starting to learn more about Lord of the Rings, you know, like what's going on here. I'm like, yeah, see. So, and you know, it works out. It works out. And what a way to segue into the topic of discussion for today's episode. Kelly, what is that topic? The topic or the title for today's episode is Eagles Are Not Airplanes. So we're trying to uh, stick with the airplane theme um, and the Eagles were the most, the first and most obvious choice to go with. Uh, so yes. we'll focus, try to focus uh, this episode on them. There's lots to say about them too. Where, when did they start? How did, where did, where, how did they come about? What are they? What are Eagles? All what right, are well, eagles? Eagles are birds. <laughs> eagles are birds. And they're not, they are not airplanes, which is an astute they observation. They are not airplanes. <laughs> but all those who ask the question that is haunts us all, why didn't they fly the ring to Mordor? Well, they're not airplanes. You can't just hop on them when you feel like it. Uh, they are sentient beings that have their own lives and their own will. Uh, but as far as Middle Earth goes, we can we can start with uh, the the beginning of where the eagles came from. So mm -hmm. we know that uh, Arda was created by the Ainur at the behest of Eru Iluvatar, and the king of Arda was named Manwe. And Manwe is the the king of the entire world. He is the uh, most powerful of the Valar, beside his evil brother Melkor, who is not part of the Valar because he is exiled and he is on his own so as far as with the valor being the gods he is the lord of the air the sky and of the wind and he can see incredibly far especially when his partner varda uh who is the queen of the stars the queen of light is next to him and he watches the entire uh globe of arda and uh, what goes on there but to gather news to where he can't see and what's going on maybe in Middle Earth because he's on a separate continent of Valinor, he has these beings known as the Eagles. And the Eagles are his messengers. They carry information back and forth. They kind of are an extension of his will if you if you want to put it that way. Now, uh, they are not just regular birds in the sense that, oh, he just was like, oh, I picked you, bird that hatched an egg. Like, very similar to Huan, they are beings of Valinor, of, of the gods, and that lineage of eagles is are his messengers, and they 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 bring forth his will, and, and they, they help when is needed at his behest. So things that he's not going to do himself, because we all know Manwe is lazy and he is the worst. Uh, are manifested through the actions of the eagles. So we hear this when we hear the eagles are coming. This is Manwe uh, relieving himself of his duty and putting it on uh, eagles like Thorndor or Guahir and, uh, you know, interjecting in the situation. Uh, so we appreciate the eagles. We don't appreciate their master because he's a bum, but we appreciate <laughs> the eagles. A bold <laughs> statement, dude. He's a bum. <laughs> <laughs> we like to make those here <laughs> i like that I, li I like to make the assertion that manway is a bum <laughs> on, so, to, on top of tanaquetil he's just up there bumming around dude just chilling man he's like yeah, yeah. yo thorn door go check that out i'm gonna sit back here and relax yeah let me know how yeah. it goes oh they're killing each other over there damn that's crazy all right <laughs> <laughs> he's such a bum would you say it's fair to say that the eagles are kind of like man to Manway as the ints to Yvana? Or, or what do you think? There's a big difference there, maybe? I think there that the eagles are more... It, they're akin, like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I yeah. definitely, like, just like I said, Huan is to Orme as the ints are to Yvana as the eagles are to Manway, I think is a fair assertion. You know what I'm saying? If, I, if I'm correct, I, I believe, like, there are some sea things that are to Olmo as well, like a whale or some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> It's, and it seems like the ints might have more like uh self determination maybe yeah, like they absolutely. they don't really they don't report back to Ivana you know what I mean they don't they and, can't the, and swim. the eagles as well like the eagles do what they want to I think there are some things that are just like maybe uh, transmitted or translated to the eagles where it's like all right 
interject here as opposed yeah. to just do your own thing, which we see in the films and what well, rather the book rather, because people always see the films and think the Eagles are just at the behest of Gandalf. Um, right. They, they have their own things going on. I think there's like one clear assignment uh, in the lore. Like there's like one clear, clear assignment, protect Gondolin. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Protect right. Gondolin. That is your, that is your charge. You know what I'm saying? And they tried, um, they did a good job. They did a a very good. I think they did an while. excellent job. Yeah, they uh, did. You know, they did. Five hundred years of 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 Gondolin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So they absolutely did a good job. I do like that um, their first eerie was above uh, Thanogadrim. I'm not I good at pronunciation. That. I like yeah. it's like it, to me it feels like Manway's like I'm not touching you, like I'm not touching you. You know, like a little kid when they're like, <laughs> like, their brother. He's like, I'm not touching you. I'm, I'm, right, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I, 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 hey, hey. <laughs> Leave your brother alone. I'm not, I'm <laughs> yeah. not touching you. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what you mean. I have I have several brothers, so I am familiar with that game. <laughs> I'm familiar with that game. Man, Manway was Manway was playing it with him with Morgan. Yeah, that's it's funny. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. The first Aries were and and, and uh, the Thing of Rodrum on the top of the Thing of Rodrum, and uh, he kept the eye on what was going on, even though they said, "Hey, we're gonna leave you alone." You know, he kept a little eye on him, spying on him. I spy with my little eye. Type of yeah, situation. Exactly. Exactly. So and then who who do you have as your, your favorite eagle? We got we got the two main eagles out of the two. We got Thorndor and then we got Gua here. So who's your favorite? You know, I, I like I like Gua here, I think. I think I'm partial Gwaihir, to Gwaihir. the Windlord. Yeah. It's a cool name, I think. I think it's a cooler name than Thorondor. Um Minigrod's a cool name. Or is that no not Minigrod, uh what is it? Mel there's Meldor and Meldor, uh, yeah. Landrovar. Because that, that one translates to Sky King and, you know, a little deep aviation lore. Sky King is a event that happened. So that's kind of, it's a crazy translation. Woo. Um, But yeah, I like, uh, I like Gwai here. I have a Gwai here sticker on my toolbox. That's, see? It says, uh, it says my other ride is Gwai here, the Windlord. <laughs> I'm I'm partial to Thorndor. I'm partial to Thorndor. I think that scarring the face of Melkor is a uh, a, a Pretty... feat worthy of of kings. Yeah, I yeah. really like that. He scooped my boy, uh, you mm -hmm. know, from up, and he brought him to his son and and buried him. Then he he scooped up uh Glorfindel and uh, he, he they were they were fighting the dragons. I just I really I really appreciate his effort throughout and the Calgon. entire. But he he kind of di dipped out after the War of Wrath, right? Yeah, as far as we know. As far as we know. As far as I, we know, he dipped off. He went back to maybe he went back to Valinor. Maybe he stayed. I don't know. I think Could, I think maybe I think there was a long period of all right, leave them alone. Like let them figure out their own shit. Like you guys have yeah. been helping for long enough, and then we get back to it in the Third Age. I I don't really know any instances in the Second Age. Where there's any intervention by the eagles, I don't either. Um, so, not so much inter intervention, but I think they watch the mental tarma. Is that in New that York? Is, that, oh yes, I'm I'm yeah. bugging out. So now there's definitely the eagles were watch watching the mental tarma, and also like the representation of the eagles were like a symbol of yo, we're mad at you. <laughs> when he sent the clouds in the shape of the eagles, it's like, yo, Manway is watching you, bums. And I'm not, I'm not feeling what you're doing. Why are you getting ready to come fight us when you're not about that life? And it's like, the fear, fear, like my representation, my eagles is watching you. Like, just like, what are you doing? It's like a warning, and they don't yeah. heed it. It's crazy. Well, yeah, the 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 Numenorians weren't too good about heeding omens there at the end you know they don't they, they do they kind of yeah they 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 have a little bit of a hubris about them so there is a thought that um eagles might have been Maiar spirits but uh we have agreed that they are not they are elevated from the level of other animals so they're like a great animal um but they still don't have the fear they don't have the soul um I would like to say I think this because that conversation about the Faya is very tricky. And I think that too often we dismiss things that are alive that aren't 
humanoid as not having a Faya, which I don't wholly agree with. I don't think they talk about where the Faya of animals or beings go, but I don't I don't think that means they don't have a Faya. I think they're alive and they're very sentient and they're their own thing. Whether they their Faya goes to uh, the Halls of Mandos or whatever is kind of irrelevant because we're only worried about the three races. Uh, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, so it doesn't matter, but they're very, I think that if we talk about it in that sense of them not having a fear, we kind of stripping them of real actual life when they're absolutely alive. Um, they're absolutely have a mind of their own. They absolutely uh, have feelings. They have uh, fears, loves, you know, the Eagles uh, love the air. They love uh, helping. They love uh, hunting. They love um, the lands themselves. They hate the orcs. They, uh, mm, you know, they, what I'm saying? Like they, they very personally much. hate the orcs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It has nothing to do with anybody else. They don't like the orcs. They don't like what they do. Uh, any of that type of thing. They are appreciative as we see, uh, Hey, Gandalf, you helped me out. I'm going to come help you out because of what you did for me. You know what I'm saying? So that's very, that's a lot of self-awareness for somebody that doesn't have a failure. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think we, we look at it, a failure as in terms of, uh, just the, the, the speaking peoples of Middle Earth in a certain sense, like the three speaking peoples, but the eagles actually could talk too. So it's like um, them, they're great animals, just like mm -hmm. Huan in a certain sense, but they're their own thing. And I think the regular eagles are the ones that we can compare and contrast them to. So in The Hobbit, it talks about how eagles are great birds, but they're evil and nasty, actually. Some of them are, are not good. So we get that from The Hobbit. But not the great eagles of the race of, uh, you know, uh, Gua here and, and the ones in the mountain, Misty Mountains. Those are the ones right. descended from, you know, Thorndor and the race of the eagles that come from Valinor. And that those th that race of eagles right there is special. And they, uh, they, you know, they are larger, probably. They are just, uh, you know, more, uh, probably more adept at certain things, uh, seeing, hearing, uh, fighting. Um, they they have a, a power just like Huan. I love to akin them to Huan and and the the Maris. Uh, you know we know these horses are descended from the horses from Valinor that are the horses of Orme and and so on and so forth. And we see they have a greater ability with uh, running, with not getting tired, with uh, with everything. You know what I'm saying? So I would akin the eagles to those type of animals from Valinor, just ascended animals of the gods, but still animals nonetheless. Um, right. Not like the werewolves of Sauron, which are we we our spirits are forced into them. Fell spirits are forced into them, creating this abomination, uh, this thing, and and that's a little different. These were naturally uh, created this way uh, by the Ainur themselves uh, or Eru, whoever in the themes, and they are ascended in that way. Um, so that's my thought on on that. I, I would love to get your thought, Max, and your thought, Callie. Uh, no, I think I think you kind of nailed it in the in my view. Um, I've always kind of viewed them as you know the eagles specifically as because they're they're fluent in several languages they talk they have their own motivations and all these things um they're very aware they have self-awareness you know that like a lot of like a normal animal might not and so i i i think i think that they're they're i don't i don't know if their spirits are that of like a lesser maiar but i do think that they're uh I mean, they're, they're sentient. They're not, they, in my mind, they're not just regular, they're not regular animals. Obviously they're not regular animals. So I, I think you kind of nailed it. You know, I don't, I don't know where their spirits came from or originated besides, you know, them being what devised by Manway. Um, I, I think because of that, it gives them some sort of, I don't know. El they're definitely elevated. Elevated. You know? yeah, in definitely. Yes. yes. Literally and figuratively. L literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they they are counted among like the free races of Middle Earth, right? They're not, yeah, and which are up there with Ents and Dwarves and men and stuff, right? I mean, they're not down there with the Balrogs or anything like that. But they're also not yeah. in the middle with Bill the Pony and like. <laughs> although I don't know, Bill the Pony might get some sort of you know. Bill uh, might be an Einer. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yo, Bill gets reverence like no other. Like it's crazy, but you know, he gets special consideration. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. 
So like there's yeah, certain races of 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 creatures they get their own like lane like even the wargs they're like yo they're definitely their own thing like and they they are like sentient and they yeah they, you know there's an army of wargs not just regular wolves that are just like oh these are just not wolves in the wild which they say so like they have like you know hey, yeah because I, I think it's in the Hobbit right. in uh, out of the frying pan actually the same you yeah. know when before they get rescued by the eagles exactly um, and also mentions that. There's a passage where Bilbo's talking about how, or Gandalf is understanding what the wargs were saying, like in their terrible tongue or something like mm-hmm. that, you know. Yeah, which I exactly. thought was interesting. I didn't say yeah, what. And, they and were I love in the um the book, The Hobbit, the eagles talk, whereas in the movie, you don't we don't get that, and it's like ah right. man, mm-hmm. they're not talking like this yeah. kind of like. I don't know if they didn't want to ham it up, but it's like yo, these these birds yeah. definitely could talk. I love when um, Guahir tells Gandalf, "Hey, yo," he's like, "Yo, can you, can you, where can you take me?" He was like, "Yo, I was sent to bear messages, not burdens." Yeah, he so has I can some take good you lines. Here, but not like, he yo, does, I got, like, you're getting out of control with this. <laughs> like, that's how you. That's yeah. how you know Guahir is awesome because he told the one of the Astari, like, "Bro, you're a burden at this point. Like, come on, <laughs> come on, man." Yeah. <laughs> and then when he picks him up again the next time when Gandalf is is back from death and he's like yo your your light is a feather like it, I don't, it don't even feel like nothing like he's yeah. telling him like you know what I'm saying like you're not a burden right now because you yeah. you, you a burden was on you have support. been he answered but not so now light as a swan's <laughs> feather in my claw you are the sun yeah. shines through you indeed I do not think you need me anymore were I to let you fall you would float upon the wind do not let me fall gasped Gandalf for he felt <laughs> life in him again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's that, that's that's amazing um we can see the sentience and we can see that they have their own agenda and their own thought process and and um if we look back to we and segue back to what we were saying about Thorndor and his deeds Thorndor does things at the behest of the valar but they're living their own life um, so Thorndor is the king of the eagles, uh, the mightiest bird that has ever lived. And, uh, you know, he they have been instructed to dwell in the crags of the mountains. Um, I remember a great passage where Yavanna's like, oh, my trees, my trees are going to be the <laughs> tallest things. And, and the eagles are going to live at the tops of the trees. And man was like, nah, chill. Only in <laughs> Owl Age trees are they going to live. And he, he means the mountains because they're taller than the trees. He's like, that's where I want them to live. So that's where they're going to be at. Fall back, bump your head because you're getting a little out of control. Now I'm just joking, but he uh, he lets her know like, yo, even though you know I let you, you know you know the ants are going to be real. Eru has decreed that, and that's your thought, and that's going to be true. So be happy. Um, the ants are going to be in the forest, and the eagles are going to be in the mountains. They're going to be taller because they're going to be able to be able to see everything where I need them to see. And we see they live, and I think there's times where they come and do things on their own. But then I think there's times where absolutely when Fingon got rescued, I mean, Fingon rescued uh, Mithros, sorry. When Fingon rescued Mithros, that was, hey, go get him. <laughs> yeah, right. Go, go get that guy. Yeah. So, so, so what happened? Let's, let's describe that event. All right. So Max, you want to start it off? About Mithros, when he, after he was, uh, he was, he got a. Uh... My he was hung. He was hung on the... yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was hung by the wrist off the uh, face of one of the mountains of the Thangarad from one of the peaks uh, by and, a Hellrod uh... bond and could not be broken. And right. uh, Fingon came to rescue him. And, and... Uh, he, he he rescued him by riding on the back of uh, Thorondor. Yeah. He, uh, and... at first, he, he, he found him, but he was too, he couldn't climb the rock face. It was too smooth right. and right. it was too high. And, you know, he was like, Damn, I'm like, and, and Mithros is like, yo, just kill me, just shoot me. Yeah, there's nothing you could do. And he, so yeah, he, had the bow he pulled back his his arrow and said, "God, this feathered shaft, you know, Manway, please." And Manway's like, "Yeah, I got, I got a, a, a I'll got a different feathered shaft." <laughs> and, and here comes Thorndor, <laughs> storming in. He he picks up uh, Fingon and raises him up to where Mithros is, which is like, yo, that's awesome that he, you know, he has the wherewithal to say, okay, let's step in here. Uh, you know, Thorndor, I need you to do this. And Thorndor comes and picks up Fingon, brings him up to where he needs to be. Um, and they decide what to do, which Fingon ends up having to cut off Mithros' hand at the wrist so it can get released from the bond. And then Thorndor bears him off to a safe place. And they could go back to Hiflum and reunite the two, uh, the, you know, divided families. And 
there's peace in the kingdom. And this is all Thorndor's doing without Thorndor coming there to aid Fingon. There was no way he could climb the rock face. There was no way he could get up there. He probably would have shot Mythros yeah. and killed him. And that would have been the end of Mythros' and, story. And his act of mercy would be, I guess. But I mean, that's like the first time the Eagles are really, that's like the first big deed they do, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know much. I don't, I don't know of anything that Thorondor did before that. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's the first big thing that's that like they the first do big we, event. Yeah, that's the first big thing that they do. Um, and then it's just the, the hits keep coming after that. Like they just yeah, keep they, doing things. They were busy in the first stage. Yeah, you know, absolutely. They, the um, all the way through uh, the getting Baron and Luthien. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the War of Wrath when they flew with uh, Arendelle and the Vingalot. Yeah. Against mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's hear more about that in detail. The War of that's Wrath. The, that's the the last thing that they do is uh yeah, the first, doing the yeah. War of Wrath. Yeah. Um so uh, the we, next thing they do with is I think is the Dagger Bragolac. Yeah, the, during the Bragolac. Um they I was after the Bragolac, am, am I not mistaken? Am I mistaken? After the Bragolac, they find Hurin and Hur. And they bring them to Gondolin. They, that's how they, yeah, that's how they get to Gondolin. Yeah, they get to Gondolin they, after they, um, they, they, they move their ear. Well, I don't. At that point, when they're in Gondolin, did they move all? Did all the Eries move, or did they still have Eries above thing of God? Above all uh, the Eries Angus? moved to the encircling mountains. Omo had, um, had Turgon move his entire population from Vinyamar right. to Gondolin. And right. so the eagles were instructed to dwell in the crags of the mountains of the encircling mountains and um, to dwell there and protect Gondolin. And um, so, you know, Ulmo put mists up to guard from the entrance and orcs, any orc that dared come near to the mountains, the eagles would fiercely attack them and keep them back. So they never were able to, you know, see what's in these mountains. And they just thought, wow, these eagles nest must be up there. Let's leave it alone. And and it was, un, everybody was unable to discover Gondolin. But he also, uh, and this is cool because the eagles are really good listeners <laughs> and they and they get messages from Olmo and uh, Manwe. And, and the message from Olmo was for them to deal kindly with the house of Hador, Hador because uh, from them, you know, retribution and, uh, you know, escape would come, you know, uh, for Gondolin, you know. So, they are t told to deal kindly with that house specifically. And boom, soon as Hurin and Huor get lost, a mist comes up. They are hid from the orcs, but they're still stuck in the wild. And Thorndor and his eagles come and rescue Hurin and Huor and bring them to Gondolin. They are instructed not to let anyone into Gondolin, but they knew, hey, these people are from the house of Hador. Mm -hmm. They can recognize that somehow. They were very smart in that sense. They knew like who they were dealing with they knew about men, they knew about their homes, and they knew about their their lineage as well. And they could recognize, hey, these people are from the House of Hador, and they brought them to Gondolin. Um, and they were accepted by uh, uh, Turgon and, and the people of Gondolin, except for Maeglin. Of course, he had a problem with them. So that was the second thing that they did. They also brought them back when it was time to bring them back, and they brought them and set them safely down in Hiflum. Then I believe the next thing they did was in Baron and Luthien. Uh, no, actually, you you know what? You're actually right, Callie. Thorndor say, uh, saves the body of Fingolfin first. When right. He, when he scars the face of... Uh, Mames Morgoth, right in the Mames. face. Morgoth. That, he that comes talent. down from the... Yeah. He, 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 he wouldn't let him defile star. the body right. of the king. And he also yeah. brings the news of Fingolfin's death to Hiflum and to Gondolin. Uh, which is oh, heartbreaking. Well, yeah, he was gonna feed Fingolf into the wolves or something. Yeah, Ooh, he was gonna. He broke him and cast his body to his wolves. Oh, yeah. my boy. <laughs> oh, it hurts me, man. It pains me to talk about that, man. So Thorndor was on that type of time, and I, the fact that he was able to, to mar Melkor's face shows how powerful he is as well. Yeah, I mean, he's the only other uh, person that was able to really. Get to Melkor in that way, you know. Yeah. Beyond him I, getting I like stabbed he, in the foot. I like how he escaped the the uh, arrows of the orcs too. He just he got up and was able to get out of there while they were shooting at him. It shows how great he is, and that he just didn't get shot with a, a, a stray arrow or something. He was able to to lift the body of the, the elven king and bring it. 
the know, greatest maybe. of all eagles, maybe. The greatest. But that is a good point that we will circle back around to later in this discussion is that eagles can be shot at and yeah. hurt by right. arrows. Yes. So which we will definitely get into that. We will, we will get to that. Okay, well, all right. So, <laughs> uh, first stage. So, oh, you mentioned Baron and Luthien, Max. Do you want yeah. to talk about what role the Eagles played there? Uh, Baron and Luthien and Thorndor rescuing them from yeah. Angband. From Angband. So after yeah, after they they uh, cut the Silmaril out of uh, with Karkaroth, right? No, uh, they they stole the Silmaril from. Uh, Karkaroth has the Silmaril in his right. stomach. Yeah, because yeah, well, yeah, they they Ain't cut it out off. of a uh, they they cut <laughs> it out of, of the crown. out of Morgoth's crown, right? And then uh, yeah. he he bit the hand off, and it while it was <laughs> clutching the, the Silmaril, and it burned his stomach, which I think is just crazy to think about, like yeah. him, like kind just of being in pain like that. that. Yeah, yeah, which kind of speaks highly on the 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 Silmarils themselves. You know, they they don't they don't take too kindly to evil creatures carrying them. Yeah. I think, which I think is awesome. And I love the setup that that Tolkien does here. So he has it so Huan doesn't come. So Huan can't run into Karkaroth yet and end that story. So he has Huan noise abroad to all the animals to keep an eye out for Baron and Luthien. And he said, hey, I'm going to head back to Doriath. Like, but I'll keep, I'll keep it because he says, I get, I got it in my mind that I'm going to meet something that I'm, I'm supposed to meet later. So I'm going to, I'm going to noise all abroad to, uh, to birds and beasts that, hey, keep an eye out for you guys. So when they do, uh, fall into this trouble with Karkaroth and Baron is wounded, like he's about to die because <laughs> right. wolf's venom, uh, and Luthien is spent. She can't stop the wolf. She can only just hold, like, hold off the poison from killing, uh, Baron, but they can't escape now, uh. Morgoth has woken up and shit is going down. The orcs and everything have woken up and they're about to come get them and they're about to be done off. And here comes Thorndor, but at the behest of hearing that Baron and Luthien needed help from Huan. So they kind of he kind of fixes that whole thing. That was really well thought out. And then Thorndor comes and and what does he do, man? Thorndor, he scoops him up, right? Yeah, he scoops takes, him up. Takes him back. And or, or one of the best lines in the entire uh, Silmarillion to me is how Thorndor, uh, you know, there's li lightning and shit striking. Like, uh, Morgoth's pissed. And he's trying to, like, strike them. But Thorndor soars above the clouds. And then as they traveling, they come across the open glaive of and see Gondolin the Fair beneath them. Like the clouds out through the the clouds and shit like that, and he sees it when it opens up, and Luthien looks down and sees it. She probably doesn't even know what she's looking at, but I just the, the thought of that and the thought of the visual of that—if they ever put that into uh, a film or, or into an animated series or something—wow, it's amazing. Especially after after having just escaped Angband, you know, after after that that clutch of despair, yeah, you know, and just being able being just Baron and Luthien, the thought of them flying in the air like has got to be like this whole time they've been traveling it on foot they've been having a the the wolf it if, if, if you know for lack of a better term and now they are like soaring in the air uh free from despair they just escaped the most terrible place on earth and she could focus on healing her beloved and just looking down and seeing that fair valley and and Gondolin and she probably was like, yo, that's where they are. Like, I don't know what this is exactly, but yo, I know, I know some elves missing. This is beautiful there. Wow. And just uh, you know, the sense of freedom, the sense of flying. Um, they must you must feel really safe in the, on the back of an eagle. Because the eagles are just nobody messes with the eagles. Nobody no. messes with them. Nobody's like, oh, let's hunt the eagles to extinction. Let's do this. They leave them alone. Oh, the eagles are there. Let's let's get the fuck out of here. I'm not, I'm not oh, trying yeah. to deal with that. If you're smart, you would, you know, yeah. if you're smart, if you're smart, you would. <laughs> so I would. We got a lot of shit that the Eagles is doing, man. So much in the first age. But Lots of I stuff. I think we're, we're coming up soon to, I wouldn't call it a mistake, but a sad part where the Eagles do not, oh. uh, not the Eagles don't do right, but Turgon doesn't do right. Oh, okay. What do you mean so, by that? They after the uh the near Naith, we know that Hurin Thalion gets captured by uh Morgoth. 
and he gets put into the chair and he's forced to look at the fate of his children and everything. And we all see what happens during the uh, the uh, the children of Harin and the story of the curse of Turin to and, uh, you know, his sister and all that tragedy goes down. But to keep the punishment going after that, after Turin dies and his sister, Morgoth releases Horin. He releases him into the wild and he's like, yeah, go ahead just to keep the punishment going because he knows people are not going to accept him. They're going to think he's in league with Morgoth. And that's exactly what happens. So Horan goes and he like screams toward Gondolin. He doesn't know where it is, but he knows the general direction. And he's like, Turgon, remember the Fen of Sarek? And Thorndor sees it's Horan. And he's like, yo, it's Horan. And he goes to Turgon. He says, yo, Horan, Horan is there. Like Horan. And he's like, yo. And Turgon is like, what? no, no, my heart is shut. If he turned against us and he doesn't go right away to get, he doesn't go right away to rescue Horan. And Horan absolutely deserves it. He had not turned. Even though, uh, you know, obviously he was being watched. He didn't know. He deserved that peace. And he never got it because Turgon immediately just thought it was, it was an ambush or a trap and he didn't trust it. Turgon then thought about it later. And this is one of the reasons I love Turgon. And he said, I, you know, he remembered the fan of Sarek. He remembered what they did for him. And he goes and sends the eagles to find him. But alas, it was too late. And Hurin had already passed beyond their sight. And it's just sad, man, because they tried. And I just remember that. And I just, like, damn, man, just, ah, oh, Turgon. Why just, I, just that one instant, man, just, you know, you did the right thing later. But if you had just been like, yo, man, this dude sacrificed everything for me. I'm going to get him regardless. We'll, it's one guy. I'll deal with him if, if he's acting up. And it's just, ah, oh, it hurts me and kills me. But the Eagles tried. That's one instance where they weren't able to help. They weren't able to save any someone. They, it, they weren't too late, but they weren't able to enact that action that we're so used to them doing. So that part, right. it kind of burns my soul a little bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> things leave you speechless, speechless, man. You're you're so good at, like, saying all this stuff with such, like, emotion. You make me feel it. You make me feel <laughs> it when you, when, you, when, you, when you tell these, like, when you go through these stories. Like, I, I, I'm feeling it again. Oh, man, I, I, I'm, I'm really happy to, to hear that, man. I, I, I try. I try my best to try to rec um I try to explain the story how it makes me feel to let people know, hey, this is why I love it so much because it evokes these emotions. You know what I'm saying? Cause I really yeah. feel that way. Like it, it bothers my soul. I'm like, damn. Like, you know what I'm saying? I really, I really rock with Thorndor. And I like, I don't I don't get a sense that he failed, but I, that he didn't get to like fully come through like he wanted to, because he wanted to get Orin. He was like, yo, right. but he just had to ask Turgon first. He was like, yo, this has already been a thing. Like, I got to ask Turgon. I can't just bring him. And he and he asked, and Turgon's like, nah, like, my heart is shut because that was my guy. Like, if he let him out, it's by Morgoth's design, which it was. So he was like, it's right. like a double-edged sword. Like, it was, but unbeknownst, unbeknown to Hurin. Hurin had nothing to do with it. And it was just so, just a slippery slope, and it hurts. And it hurts that the eagles, who are so just faithful and trustful, weren't able to just complete that that task i know they wanted to do it would you know have broken their heart it would have broken their heart too you hey, know, it, it definitely to... probably broke their heart man and then we uh i think we come up uh, um to the fall of gondolin i think we come into the fall of gondolin and mm -hmm. thorndor does something amazing again he is part of the whole glorfindel rescuing of the entire race of the everyone because if it wasn't for uh you know glorfindel's sacrifice uh there would be no world as we know it. Morgoth would have won because Eärendil would have not survived. Right. This the the, the war of wrath would have uh, been a lot shorter and and probably not won. Morgoth might. <laughs> I don't have, even uh... think there would have been a war of wrath. Eärendil yeah, because Morgoth would have just yeah right. Yeah, he would have just took over the world. Nobody would have came to talk to the Valar. Uh, yeah, man. So Glorfindel uh, at during the fall of Gondolin. Uh, and during their route of escape that was made by Ethereal Kellebrindle, uh, you know, they travel northward through the mountain pass and they run into orcs and a Balrog. And Glorfindel strode forward to fight the Balrog, but the eagles also come and the eagles fight off the orcs and while Glorfindel is fighting the Balrog. The the place of that where the, of that fighting, I think, is named the 
something thorn door or something like some some cleft of the eagles or something the eagle pass or the cleft of the eagles um i can't remember exactly where they're fighting but it's named something to that effect um that might give you an interesting thing to do guys google it but i'm pretty sure that the name of that pass where they're fighting uh is like the eagles cleft or the eagles pass or some the shit like eagles that. cleft <laughs> something like that <laughs> it belongs and, um, to them now that's the point Lorfindil fights uh fights over Kirith, Belrog. Kirith Thoronath, the Eagle's Cleft. You were right. Boom. He's wow. got Sometimes it. Sometimes I know some yeah. things. I didn't I never, the I thing. never doubted you. I never doubted you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I Yo, never man. doubted you for a second. Yo. <laughs> yeah. They, so um, uh I was, to, I was just a quick aside to um uh, Glorfindel. Uh, when he, you know, when they were getting ready to leave Rivendell, the fellowship, we're going to fast forward to that. Sorry. I just, it made me laugh thinking about it. I was talking to somebody and, you know, they don't take, I was like, cause like, I was like, Glorfindel would be a great addition to the fellowship. Obviously I know they go reasons why he can't be a part of it, but I was just saying, cause it, it, it'd be going through uh, Moria. And when that Balrog showed up, Glorfindel would have been like, "Man, not again!" Like, come on. just before. Uh, <laughs> and then I, I don't think they're gonna bring me back for a second time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gandalf would have turned around and been like, "This foe is beyond seven of you." <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I picture like Glorfindel falling to that Balrog, but like also killing it at the same time, getting back to the um the halls and then being like another balrog and he's like yeah guys another 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 freaking balrog Come again, on. Like, again. Did you cut your hair this time he's like no <laughs> yeah. man my hair was still long <laughs> it was still long man you didn't learn you didn't learn from last time yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyways that that's like my little joke about uh glorfindel yeah. yeah no love it let's it, move like, like my, i mean uh, so we, we mentioned what they do in the second age which is sort of hang out and be I don't know religious symbols almost not religious but like yeah. symbols of man way I would that yeah they are, really don't they play a small role in the second age they don't really do too much they're yeah. just a representation of basically of man way them watching the Numenorians just the messengers the the same type of spiritual they're, uh maybe they're taking a, a well-deserved rat rest you know after uh after the first stage you know they kind of they earned a little bit of time off from they turned the time at the end of the third age, by the way. They turned the time at the end of the oh, yeah, at yeah. the end of the first age. I mean, when they that's what I mean. Yeah. So it's like all right, y'all can take a break yeah. now. Like, thanks for doing the war of wrath and fighting and Caligar. Fighting the winged dragons. No, yeah. no mm -hmm. joke. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Uh take take some time. Take some take a vacation for the second. Can age. we quickly talk about how in the rings of power we got to see a representation of that? Mm. The eagles of fighting the, the dragons. When did they the, show that? Just in the, the show? opening sequence. In the opening sequence, yeah, we saw it's a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to rewatch yeah. that that opening sequence. I've only I only saw it, I saw it twice, but I don't I don't remember a, the the eagles in that opening segue. I'll have to rewatch it. Oh yeah, they it's weird. I I I don't love how they look. They look like big uh, pigeons, kind of. <laughs> they don't look like <laughs> eagles to me. I think they look. They don't look as regal and majestic as an eagle would look. They look like just kind of like big. Regular birds, like you know what I'm saying? Like if you look at it, it's like like that looks I'm like have a to freeze robin. that frame. <laughs> that looks like a big robin. That doesn't look like an eagle. <laughs> like you know what eagles look like? And I don't know, but that was my thought process. But it was still cool to see uh, you know, the yeah. birds fighting the dragons. And we get to see that, and I thought it was awesome. I'll, I'll have to rewatch it. Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't Thorn think we can fully eagles. grasp the size of all of that. Like yeah. everything in the first age was bigger, I feel like too. But yeah, bigger and more I, powerful. That's why I don't think you could. Uh, I think it'd be really hard to make any like kind of film adaptation to it because it's just like it's too grand of a scale, really. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, so third age like, eagles, third which age people eagles. will be probably our listeners will probably be more familiar with the activities of the eagles in the third age, as we mentioned at the beginning of the conversation we don't have Throndor we have a bit of a change in management um at this yeah. time so <laughs> so let's get into it well yeah so I, I, I know yeah and I see a lot of people um I, I've read before that it's it's a subject of debate whether the the Lord of Eagles mentioned in the Hobbit is Gwaihir or a different eagle because mm -hmm. you know Gwaihir is not mentioned by name in the Hobbit mm -hmm. 
in my opinion. Neither is Thranduil, though, I think, right? As like yeah, a, he's like the Elven King. Right, yeah, yeah the, the Hobbit yeah. never says Thran 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 Thranduil, it's not in it. No, yeah. it's the same. <laughs> yeah. Hobbit, you're weird. Okay, anyway, sorry. <laughs> so it, it just, I'm putting it on the record right now, in my opinion, quite here, is the eagle in the Hobbit. The, the, yeah. That's my opinion. It I don't know definitely, it's, right. it's definitely him. Sometimes th we don't have to, things are alluded to, to a, to, to a strength and point to where, like, cut it out. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, Thranduil is the king of the elves in Mirkwood yeah. because he's been the king of the elves in Mirkwood. So if it says <laughs> yeah. so in uh, the subsequent texts and we know that time period is covered within the Hobbit, then yes, he is the king. And we know Thranduil is the father of Legolas and Legolas is the prince during the time of the Lord of the Rings. So him being the prince, his father has to be the king and it's Thranduil. His father, his grandfather Orifer dies long before that. So it's not him. So let's cut it out. <laughs> Some people are just out of control with their logic that they try to box you in. Uh, I think somebody did that the other day. They're like, oh, um, the Hobbit has the Witch King um, dying and uh, being raised from the dead from the... Uh, the, the tombs of Rudauer and blah, 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 the high fells. And I'm like, yeah, so common sense and logic and reading uh, eliminate at that as a possibility. And that's something that they just added from the movie. And he's like, oh yeah, prove it. And I'm like, just read the book and he never dies. He can't die till the end. So that proves it in itself, um, which they constantly cover how the Nazgul are transformed into these nine beings that are caught between the Wraith world and the, and the the regular world, and they are the servants of Sauron, and the Witch King does not die until the end of the Third Age at the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Then I had to pull up other writings about the war in Arnor and how the Witch King did not die after the war in, Ar um, in Arnor from Angmar. He literally left and went to Mordor. I had to pull that nice. up from the appendices and tell He's them to let. He, he can't die like that. You know? right. So stop with this, the foolishness. So don't let them box you in with that silly logic. Not that they did, but I won't. I won't. <laughs> so I, have to, I have to get that out over my chest. All right, let's just do it. Let's do it. While we're talking about difficult topics, let's just tackle it. Let's get it out of the freaking way. Why can't the Eagles bring hobbits and the, the fellowship and the ring to Mordor? Let's do it. Max, why can't they do it? Well, that wouldn't be a very stealthy way of getting a ring into Mordor, right? Like if, if yeah. I'm trying to sneak into somebody's backyard, I'm not going to fly on a giant bird to do it. You know? Yep. I'm There's not going to fly on a giant bird uh, that are you know, natural enemies of the orcs. A little bit of a bow and arrow kind of thing, you know, get, get shot. Uh, not to yes. mention uh, as soon as Sauron sees the ring going over the, uh, the mountains to get to a Rodrin, I think he might probably send some, uh, some of his handy dandy ring wraiths over there to, Maybe stop that from happening. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's a it's the easiest way for them to get caught. Like the whole, they say immediately the the quest relies on secrecy, right? Uh, yeah. So that's not very secret. Is one and reason. One of the things I always like to point out is read the Hobbit. Uh, Why here tells Gandalf, "Hey, I can bring you here, but I'm not bringing you by these woods. I'm not bringing you anywhere where there's people because they'll shoot at us." Yeah. So if people that ain't got even got beef with the eagles like that want to shoot at them, imagine orcs. And we know in the Southlands and in the east where Mordor is and uh, the the east side of the river and every place that you could think of where it's like, hey, why don't they just drop them here? Because they're trying to be secretive. And one eagle flying is different from uh, nine eagles flying. And then it looks like, oh, okay, they're being watched, and now it's like, okay, something's going on here. Saruman's watching them. Sauron's watching them. They're watching the lands. They can't get dropped off certain places because the the east and, and south is being held in sway by Sauron and the uh, the orcs. There are orcs uh, the east side of the Misty Mountains. There are orcs on the east side of the Anduin River. There are orcs uh, in Dol Guldur, sevenfold the strength of what was going on. So the Vales of Anduin isn't a, a safe place to be. So all these places where it would be, you know, advantageous for them to get dropped off, don't make any sense for them to get dropped off there. They can't. They can't even go to Lothlorien. They have, when they do go, they are immediately captured. So it's like 
that whole thing is like another thing. Like it's protected and it's like, what's going on? It's a bunch of places they can't go. They can't go to the Gap of Rohan because it brings them too close to Isengard and all that good stuff and all that bad stuff is happening in Rohan. So what are we talking about here? What are we talking about? Just stop saying it. They can't fly. Oh, but I, 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 I think maybe the people, the humans were shooting at the eagles because the eagles were maybe eating their sheep eating eating their sheep yeah but it's just the, the point of, slightly fair they're, they're just defending their livestock but they absolutely. didn't have like... I'm just but that's the point though the <laughs> yeah. humans are doing it but for some can. regular they reasons yeah, yeah. If they can hurt them why here was injured by one of the humans and mm -hmm. gandalf patched up his wing so it's they can die so he's like yo i'm not putting myself in harm's way like uh unless it's like absolutely vital like you know yeah. what i'm saying you guys can make it. You're okay. Do it yourself. That's what they had to do. They had to make their own way, man. So I agree. They can't do it. And they're, they're not a they're not a taxi service, you know. They are not a taxi service. They are not. No. So, but uh, Guahir does some great deeds. The Battle of the Five Armies. Ooh, how epic was that? The Eagles are coming. The Eagles are coming. Well, yeah, and the eagles just kind of saw all the movement of the goblins and the the goblins, and they were like, they went to go see like where are all these? Where's this host going? You know, and then they're like, oh, yeah. I, like they weren't sent there, right? Yeah, I don't even think they were sent there. They were like, yo, this is we already Mentor had an issue summoned. with these yeah. goblins. They were going to try to break up the raid of the goblins. Um, that night they were watching. The Lord of the Eagles was watching. He said, yeah, so a bigger, greater move, and just in the north where they're they are dealing with. The they had to that's more of their lands of where they had to go. So they were like, yo, let, let me intervene. So hey, so Max, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions um before we, we wrap things up. I want to get into your your life a little bit. Like I we yeah. know you work on airplanes. Um, what got you into working on airplanes and how did you choose that for a career path? Uh yeah, it's a it's not a very exciting story. I used to be a bartender for a long time. Um, okay. For about four or five years when i was in my you know 18 19 um and then i had my first son and i was like man i need a i need health insurance or something um so i went to tech school and uh i had some friends that were aircraft mechanics and so i just uh they were like hey you should come do this you're good at fixing stuff and then uh yeah i kind of fell into it like that and then i, I took some time off from aviation i worked on trains for a while Oh, nice. And then I came back to working on airplanes. So awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, that's hey, man. And sometimes necessity drives you, man. And then you find something that you're really good at and you love. Yeah. I've always loved airplanes. You know, I was, I've always thought they were really cool when I was younger. I was a big fan of like old, old World War II planes and stuff. And then, um, you know, I thought, I just thought it sounded cool. Really. I was like, airplanes are cool. I think fixing airplanes would be cool. I didn't even realize that that was a job at the time. I never really thought <laughs> about it. Not a lot of people are familiar with aviation maintenance. And so it's it's a fun, it's a really niche industry, but it's fun. I like it a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. So now we we know that why here is your favorite eagle. Uh, yes. What is your favorite plane? This is a controversial opinion. It is the Bombardier Q400. Yo, I've heard of that, but I can't picture it in my head right now, but it sounds freaking really cool. And I feel yeah. like I know, like if you were like, were to show, pull up a picture of it, I'd absolutely know which one it is. It's, but, a, um, it's a high wing right. tube. Two big old turboprops on it. It holds mm -hmm. about seventy six people. It's if we're talking passenger planes, oh, it wow. is. Uh, okay. It's an absolute nightmare to work on. It is not a fun plane <laughs> to fix. Oh but, wow! Uh, but I learned that's the first plane I really worked on, so I learned to love it, and I learned a lot about being a mechanic on that plane. Uh, if we're talking my favorite historical plane of all time, probably the B seventeen. Uh, okay, is, is probably my favorite. Yeah, which B seventeen. That's a World War II bomber. Uh, George Lucas actually modeled the Millennium Falcon. Like his inspiration behind it was the uh, B seventeen. That's it's awesome. Got a, it's got a ball turret on the bottom that kind of spins around. It's a crazy plane. <laughs> I, yo, I, 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 I got you. I, I, uh, is, you know, is, is that a World War II plane, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. I, I love. Um, you know, World War II history, and I've seen that that plane and that bomber and uh, yeah. the turret on the bottom right there. That's that yeah, awesome. It's and a, now it's I can see plane. the inspiration. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So if we took an yeah. old world plane, we're gonna say a plane, not a jet. So we're gonna mm -hmm. leave, you know, like stealth bombers and shit like that, F-17s and 15s or whatever the numbers are. Um, we're gonna leave those out. 
what yeah what plane would you send up against Thorndor? I can't send a plane up against Thor. <laughs> like, no, no man, absolutely there are fighting none dragons of them. that breathe fire. It's okay to send up a plane against them. Is this is a heavenly divine creature? They'll be okay. Okay, all right. Uh, we're excluding what? fighter jets. Yeah, we can't fight. We, we, we can go old world. Old world, old world. Okay, all right. Um, maybe a. I mean, I feel like the 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 obvious choice would be the P fifty one Mustang. Uh, that's a great one mustang yeah that would probably be that one or p38 lightning p38 had Yo. a little bit extra range i think it had a maybe a higher service ceiling and you know we know thorn is gonna be able to fly pretty high so okay. you need to be, up, be able to get up there so I, either one of those two options would be we'll go uh, but i think i'm gonna stick with p51 all right the, who do you uh, think was the greatest pilot of all time during a war oh man i dude i'm i that's a good question i don't know their names I'll be oh, okay, honest. okay. Yeah, I'll, no, I'll, I, I only know of the Red Baron. <laughs> the, the Red Baron, that's World War One. World War One, yeah. Yeah, and, but Baron I don't I don't even remember what his actual name is. Okay, okay. I know that was his title. That was that triplane with the three wings on it. That one was crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. So it, that would yeah. I think that would be like a, a really cool battle on some King Kong versus man type shit. But I think Thorndor would have a greater chance. Some on some on some Rodan shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, Rodan just destroys the planes with the sonic, uh, you know, the sonic thing from his wings. <laughs> I think that would be really awesome. It would. <laughs> yeah, they, um, yeah, but that's how I got into uh, aviation maintenance, like long, long, long roundabout way of getting into it. But uh, I really love it and I'll be doing it probably for the rest of my career. I don't have any, any other really desires. So, all right, guys. We are going to say goodbye to our wonderful guest, Max, right now. He has to go do what needs to be done. He has to go be a dad. Um, and thank you so much for being that person, being that person that's, hey, listen, nothing is more important to your children um, than the next generation. So thank you so much for being on our podcast and talking to us about your love of airplanes and your love of the eagles of uh, Middle Earth. Absolutely fantastic, man. We know that they're not taxis. <laughs> we know that, you know what I'm saying? They are sentient beings of their own. They're the messengers of Manway and they're awesome. And you are awesome. Thank you for the content you create. Uh, thank you for making us laugh um, and giving us information. Now go do your dad duties and, and get to your son. All right. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so uh, thank much, you, Max. Man. Yeah, just to basically close it out, we know that the eagles participate uh, greatly in the third age. Uh, we, mm -hmm. They help with they help Gandalf. They rescue Gandalf in the uh, the Hobbit, and and they rescue the dwarves. And then we see in the Lord of the Rings, they actually rescue um, Gandalf from Orthanc. Uh, but he was sent there to give a message, and he said, "Hey, I'm just here to give give a message. I ain't here to bring burdens." But he sets him down in, in Rohan and helps there. Uh, Galadriel sends him when Gandalf falls, um, and then finally comes back to life on the top of, uh, you know, Zerok Ziggo and the, the mountain peak uh, when he fought the Belrog. Gandalf is rescued by Gwahir again at the behest of Galadriel, and he's like, "Yo, you light as a feather now. You know, I'm gonna help." <laughs> And, uh, you know, th throughout the entire book, we hear about an eagle soaring around and I'm looking up and seeing the eagle and, uh, you know, the, the help that the eagle brought. And then at the end, the eagles are coming. The eagles are coming. They help fight at the Battle of the Black Gate. I think that uh, even though we know that they couldn't win that fight, the eagles prevented them from being killed before the ring was destroyed and the eagles mm -hmm. come and help them out in that battle. Uh, they would have definitely lost because, you know, Sauron's arms were too straight, strong and, and, and his yeah. force was too great, but the eagles prevented that. Now, the last and final question I have is, was the third eagle in the Lord of the Rings film sent for Gollum? People keep asking me that, so we cannot leave out without answering that question. I don't have an answer. I think that is wishful thinking, and it's very, very uh, thought-provoking and, and dope for somebody to feel like, wow, Gandalf is really, really that kind. But I have no freaking idea. But, Callie, I feel like you have some kind of knowledge or thought thoughts behind this to where, tell me what you feel. What, what is your thought process behind that? I mean, I don't know anything for sure, of course. Uh, but I think that even though it breaks my heart utterly, um, I think I think they might have been because they didn't do a whole lot 
by accident. You know, they didn't miscount. They didn't send extra or not enough. They always sent what was exactly what was needed when it was needed. And so I think that maybe there was some some very optimistic part of them that thought maybe. I don't know. I feel like Bilbo was extra. Like Bilbo was hanging on to the legs of Dory and That's they were an extra bird for him. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe that debunks that, you know. Um but yeah, if if that's the case, then then I we know what I'm going to subscribe to it. I, I don't have a problem with subscribing to that. Gandalf <laughs> didn't want him to be saved, and he knew about pity. He was a student of Vienna, and uh, the pity of Bilbo did save the fate of men. It did. It did. Message. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, that was the uh, that was the episode on the uh, eagles of uh, you know the eagles of Tolkien and um, airplane facts with max uh that was who was a great guest and um mm -hmm. before we get out of here as always we want some self-care tips from cali cosplay i'm sure they're going to be some kind of flying tips let me see if i can get that <laughs> let's see so Guys, it, yeah it's quite you're, you're getting the hang of this aren't you new man <laughs> oh, <laughs> so self-care while traveling which is very topical because i myself was just traveling i was just in new york with all the fantastic tolkien talk creators and hanging out with my cali cows <laughs> it was amazing all right, so number one, bring the right footwear with you. Uh, numbers two, three, and four are all kind of related. So stay hydrated, eat relatively well. Um, we understand when you're traveling, you're indulging, but indulge, you know, with that in mind. Uh, get enough sleep and do your stretches. Uh, tip number five, build some free time into your itinerary. Uh, number six, do activities that matter to you, not what you think you should do while you're there. And tip number seven, if you're traveling with a group, set expectations ahead of time. And that way everything will flow smoothly and everyone will get what they want out of it. Absolutely. Uh, she's absolutely right. Um, and all your travels, guys, I want you to make sure you uh, buckle up and stay safe. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, make sure you uh, look toward the stewardess and listen to her directions when you're in the air. Because uh, it could save your life. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for participating in this episode. We'll be back with another great episode of Voices of Art very soon. And as always, we love all of you guys. Take care and peace. <laughs> thank you.